uh, detailed and dissection of this particular data. Right now, I'm joined by Dr. Fred Ogola from Strathmore Business School to help us now even understand this particular report further. Uh, Dr. Ogola, this ranking, Kenya's improved actually five positions. Is it in touch with the ground? Because what we're seeing right now, uh, you know, liquidity in the market, pretty low. A lot of complaints, you know, SMEs are dying each and every single day. Is it in line with what you're seeing on the ground or is it just a report out there? Yeah, well, um, uh, first of all, we have to understand what ease of business tries to achieve. Mm -hmm. Does the ease of the business, business uh, ranking try to achieve uh, the aspects of internal economy, mm -hmm. or it tries to achieve attracting of foreign investment, or attracting people who are trying to do business in Kenya. But why World Bank is doing this is trying to look for what is the best investment de uh, destinations to go to. So is Kenya becoming better investment destinations to go to? Mm -hmm. But also it can also to play to the fact that is it better for a Kenyan to set up a business in Kenya? or it's better to go out of Kenya, to set up a business out of Kenya. Yes. So as this rank goes on, remember that this rank has the economic perspective, which means, for example, um, what are the economic incentives to set up a business in Kenya? Mm -hmm. This could be, for example, the interest rates we are talking about, mm -hmm. the ease of accessing finance. But also in the aspect, there's what we call the cage model. Cage model starts with the word C. The mm -hmm. first word is C, yes. cultural distance between any investor and Kenya. Yes. Kenya is an is a English-speaking country. Mm -hmm. So for the number of countries that speak English, any investor can easily come and survive here in terms of language. Yes. Kenyans' way of doing business, Kenyans are very aggressive. Adoption rates are always high. Mm -hmm. You give a Kenyan idea, they can run with it and set up a business. So the aspect of the, uh, the, 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 the cultural distance works because Kenya is not very culturally distant from the world. Mm -hmm. A Kenyan can adapt very easily, and Kenya is an easily adaptable country. Mm -hmm. So you go to the next one, which we talk about administrative. So you see those things which I've just been read now, talking about how many days does it take to register property? Yes. Uh, how many days does it take to transfer your property? Um, so those administrative barriers, if you call them the milestones that have been reduced that the deputy president was talking about, mm -hmm. that the government will become very deliberate in lowering them. Mm -hmm. So that is true because it is not looking at how the people are feeling in the country, but yes. it's looking at how can you register property. Yes. So how many Kenyans register property? Definitely. You know, the number is not very high. Mm -hmm. But for those people who are registering property, those who are buying land, those who are buying cars, those who are transferring shares and the rest, then you discover that for sure that's the reality with this. Yes. But even from the from the cage, there's the issue of uh, the issue of ge geographical mod, uh, the geographical reach. For example, how is it easy to navigate the country? Because you may find that infrastructure is to do with many things. If somebody wants to set up an, a pharmaceutical company, mm -hmm. geographically, how can you navigate Kenya? Kenya has been investing hugely in infrastructure. Remember, mm -hmm. the the big four agenda is all about infrastructure involved. Yes, SGR. I know there have been some complaints about now the one happening in Suso, but at the same time, those are moves that are going to the right direction. Mm -hmm. Building roads, the airport is changing. Uh, so this, that helps because navigating Africa, look at the role Kenya Airways has been playing mm -hmm. in connecting Nairobi to every other part of Africa. Yes. So you realize that geographical, geographically, Kenya is also doing very well. Mm -hmm. So looking at this ranking, this position actually is a position that reflects the truth. Yes. But on the ground, what is affecting the, uh, the, 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 the local entrepreneurs here, like they talk about SMEs, mm -hmm. that's a different story. Of course, they benefit mm -hmm. from ease of doing business, but they were not the real target because ease of do, doing business will put pressure on different governments yes. to make it easy for people to do business with them. Mm -hmm. But if you look at it, you cannot use, just use one matrix to see whether it is good to do business in Kenya or not. Definitely. Rwanda has a better performance. Mm -hmm. uh, because Rwanda has a better performance, just being easy to set up a business in Rwanda does not make it easy for you to earn an, a return on investment. Mm -hmm. The size of the wallet in Rwanda is quite small. Yes. So economically, Rwanda will perform very poorly. But when you just rate depending on how many days it takes to register a business, it can take you just 30 minutes, mm -hmm. but how, does it, how long does it take for you to re get a return on investment in Rwanda? Definitely. Remember that uh, if you have to look at some economic variables, uh, Rwanda is in their first generation of people with money, mm -hmm. which means that uh, those who are rich in Rwanda, the middle class, they are the first people with money. 
in Kenya, we are almost at the third generation of people with money. Mm -hmm. Because the first generation, you can name them. Um, uh, if you look at even the first family, you can talk about Uhuru, Uhuru Kenyatta. He's the second generation with money. Mm -hmm. Then Uhuru has children. Yes. Raila the same. Mm -hmm. And go to other families that are in the middle class. Yes. So you are having intergenerational accumulated wealth and therefore economically Kenya performs better. So even if you lag uh, uh, behind administratively, mm -hmm. economically we are doing well and cumulatively now Kenya is moving forward. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's quite interesting that yeah. the focus is yeah. the ease yes. of doing business, setting up a business. Yeah. Now I'm trying to look uh, on how mm. this translates yeah. into, you know, economic empowerment, especially yes. right now. Yeah. Look at the youth. A yeah. lot of unemployment. And, and people are saying actually one of the biggest ways and easy ways yeah. of, of handling this particular issue, yes. it will be creating job opportunities. Yes. What job opportunities are we talking about? These companies that are coming, whether it is you know from foreign uh, yeah. lands or within Kenya. Uh, I'm looking at this particular you know, issue of, yeah. of this data. Yeah. You're saying that, you know, it's very easy to set up a company in Kenya. But so far, as we speak, the status quo, is it translating into tangible effects on the ground? Are we seeing more businesses being set up and more people maybe getting employment from it? Um, I, I think that you have known that unemployment rate in Kenya is very high. Mm -hmm. And there was a crisis around this one. In fact, you also, when Kenyatta University students were demonstrating against this one. And the unemployment rate is high for reasons which have nothing to do with the correlation with uh, uh, ease of doing business. Mm -hmm. Because you'll see, if you can able to start a business, SMEs have suffered yes. access to credit. Mm -hmm. In Kenya, what is the, that one big barrier to be able to grow a business mm -hmm. is access to credit. Yes. Banks have liquidity on average in Kenya as high as 62% liquidity, mm -hmm. meaning that banks are holding nearly 62% of the deposits they can actually lend outside. Mm -hmm. Does it mean there's no demand for cash outside there? No, there is demand of cash outside there. But the credit policies, given the interest rate capping, will, may make it very unattractive for a bank to lend their money outside. They are better off keeping their money inside mm -hmm. or lending to government than lending to SMEs and entrepreneurs. Yes. So because of that, then it is difficult for these SMEs to grow. Mm -hmm. You look at percentages we are talking about. You go to U US, look at the economies there. Mm -hmm. Family businesses, which are SMEs, have been the ones which became big corporations. Remember, Coca-Cola was set up by a family business. It was a family business. It became a corporation. Mm -hmm. um, you can name any of the Fortune 500 firms which yes. have been incredibly uh, powerful. They were family businesses. Mm -hmm. You go to France, yes, sir. Uh, you go to UK. Mm -hmm. These started from family business. So if the lower part is suffering, yes. how are we sure that the top can survive? Definitely. So that's why the government maybe by looking for how to revise the interest cap, yes. they maybe have realized that it's better yes. to put money on the bottom okay. because the bottom can consume so that even the upper can be able to uh, get wow. some benefits. Wow, yes. that's, that's quite an incredible revelation, yes. making sure that there is that trickle-down effect, yes. money reaching to the bottom and it circulates up and coming yes. down. Yes. Uh, but in the interest of time, right now we want to take a break uh, so that we can have BBC Money Daily later on. But this is quite interesting. Actually, I urge you to go and take a look at that particular report of ease of doing business. At the same time, yesterday, APSA released, uh, you know, financial uh, markets. That is Africa's financial markets report how we are performing. Take a look at some of this report and see where we are standing as a nation. But right now, we take a break. Later on, we shall be having.